Um, unlike insect camaro, I can't fly, so but I can run, and uh, that's what I've been able to do in the past uh, five, actually since 2006 when I first started running. In 2013, uh, I was very fortunate enough to uh, be invited to TEDx uh, UKL to share about the extra mile. And uh, it's a privilege again to be able to share with you what I've done. Uh, but what I've also done is uh, two things that extra mile have done in other extra mile. And uh, I've done it with some friends. And I want to share with you the journey that I have. Uh, I call myself an extra mile as an extra mile. So here goes. When I first did the extra mile, I had three quotes. The first quote is, uh, if somebody asks you to go with him one mile, go with him uh, the extra mile, go with him the second mile. And I always told people that your first mile is what you're good at. Uh, what you do with your extra mile, it depends on what you decide to do with the first So if you're good at, say, cooking, you take it and you help somebody else. I was fortunate enough to be able to run and I took that and I started to raise up funds uh, for different causes. I had a second quote. If you want to go far, go alone. If you want to go far, bring a friend. And I told my friends, I'm going to run at 100 km. Come and join me because uh, it's going to be tiring. I need encouragement. I can't do it alone. And so come and join with me throughout the run. It's a relay run, so come and join with me. Run with me. And let's see where that takes me. Encourage me. But it also means of, uh, helping the community. If you want to help somebody, you can do it alone. But if you do it with friends, actually you impact more. And so I told people, you know, come and pledge with me uh, to this cause and let's raise up funds. The third quote, set yourself on fire for the things you're passionate about. And people will come from miles to watch you burn. And so I told people, I'm going to run. It's going to be 17 hours. Come and join me, uh, and come and join me, and understand the passion that I have for the cause I'm running for. And so they did. And I told everybody that I'm Alex the Extra Mala. But what I really wanted to do was say, you know, you can be Tiffany the Extra Mala, Brian the Extra Mala, anybody can be an Extra Mala. Uh, you don't need to be somebody who's extraordinary. You can just be a normal person but go the extra mile. So in 2011, I'll just go through with you some of the things that happened. I ran uh, 100km. Uh, it was basically in 17 hours, I paces with me, volunteers. We raised up 111,000 and I gave back to uh, Stark Academy. And uh, it was really uh, an amazing journey. It took me 17 hours. Actually, I've never done 100km before. The run I did before was about 84km. So this was more, and it was tougher because I had to run through the night. Uh, but I managed to complete it and raise up funds. We had uh, different sponsors who joined me, supported me, and I'm very privileged to uh, also receive funds from them. And so these are some of the photos of uh, the extra mile. I ran in the evening, all the way through the night and into the morning. I made a lot of friends. Uh, I want to call them extra milers because they came out at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning to support me. Uh, through the stops actually that I have, uh, I shared with them about uh, what it is to go the extra mile. So there were about 5 stops. One of the stops was, uh, I call it the extraordinary walk. I told different people that yes, you can run and go the extra mile. But extra milers are not those who just can run, but they are also people who have a heart to go the extra mile. So Cheryl Mohan was one of them, uh, and she she's an Orang Kurang Upaya, and uh, we did the extra uh, ordinary walk. I told parents, come and join me, and uh, bring your children, because I want to instill the message that extra milers are not just people like, uh, who are older, who understand about going the extra mile, but it could be kids. And uh, if you implant that into their hearts, uh, sooner or later, they will go the extra mile later in their life. So this was just some media coverage that came about. Fast forward, 2013. I took a break, 2012. And uh, there was a nudging again for me to do uh, the extra mile. And I decided, okay, maybe I'll do it again and I'll give it to another course. So I did, and I did this for uh, Run for Dignity. 
this time, I didn't want to be the only extra mother. I told my friends, I, I need people who come and join me, who also believe in the vision that I have. And uh, I had two other friends to join me. That was uh, Daniel, uh, he's Orang Kurang Obaya, and uh, Carl. They had never done an extra mile before, 100 km before, but they joined me. We had this joke that Daniel uh, would be sitting throughout the whole run, where else me and Carl would be running. And uh, it was an experience, he had a fun time pushing himself, he had to run. So we gave to Dignity for Children Foundation, and uh, through that whole process, I, I reminded myself that I cannot be the only person to carry the vision of the extra mile. Uh, I wanted to empower other people. And so what I did was, through the learnings of the first extra mile, I said, okay, I don't want to focus on me, because I can do a hundred. But I want to focus on people who want to go the extra mile and who want to run. And so that's what I did. I had a little campaign and I shared different people who wanted to go the extra mile. This was some of my friends. Some of them who I had not known before and decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to do 30 km. I'm going to raise 1,200 for you. And uh, they ran. They ran the extra mile. So, what happened in 2000, after 2013, uh, I took a break. So, and then uh, I realized, okay, uh, sorry, after 2011, uh, 13 actually, uh, 2011, uh, 2012, I took a break. And then I realized, okay, it's time to do the extra mile again. And uh, so this is the starting line. We ran through Puchon Jaya, we started at 6 p.m. We had the police, we had ambulance, they joined us, ran throughout the night. Sunway Pyramid, uh, actually Sunway Pyramid was one of my stops here. Ran through Sento. I can missing photo. But yeah, for the Dignity Kids, they went out and they ran too. And they never done the 10 km and decided to run together. Now Daniel was taking the charge because all right, me and Carl, we were really tired. Went through the night all the way into the morning. Switch. 80 p.m. I was towards the end, but I told myself, you know, I just need to run and encourage different ones. So we ran through Jalan uh, Parliament, 9 a.m. We did the extraordinary walk again. Uh, Cheryl Mohan was there again, and uh, this time Daniel was also there. And he had already made about 90 over km. So this was towards our end part, the last 10 km. And uh, Towards the end, we, were, we started, uh, we ended at, at Jaya 1. And uh, this was Petrina. She was the, one of the principals for uh, Dignity for Children Foundation. And through the whole run, we raised up 165,000. Uh, it was really amazing. It was uh, uh, definitely a run to, to remember. But I think more than anything else, it was a run that uh, I think brought different people together. And uh, they believed in the cause, they believed that we could go the extra mile. And uh, after I did the extra mile, I told myself, okay, uh, this is it, I, no more running. And uh, ever since then, actually I have taken a break. But uh, what happened was one of my sponsors, uh, Frog Asia, uh, sponsored 10,000. And uh, the executive director of uh, Frog Asia um, also invited me to a talk. And I went in and uh, one day, during that talk, it, it inspired me to, okay, I, you know, I've always done something in terms of education. Uh, why not start helping out in education? Every run that I've given to has to always focus on education because I believe education breaks the cycle of poverty. And I told her, I wrote an email to her at about 4 in the morning and said, you know what, I'm passionate about 
education, is there some way I can help out? And so she linked me up with her mum, uh, who is from uh, YTL, YTL Foundation, and I got a job in the foundation. And uh, ever since then, uh, I've been working, uh, I started work in the foundation, and uh, so now it's 2015. Uh, 2014, I took a break. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, we all need breaks all, uh, every now and then. Um, but let me share with you what has happened since the extra mile and what I've used with that uh, capacity uh, and in doing what I, I do best now. Uh, I took the concept of the extra mile uh, and tried to apply it into the work that I do. And so, 2015, uh, I got married. Aww. I think that is a very different kind of extra mile. I think it's uh, long term, you know. But more than anything else, uh, I've been able to go to schools and inject schools. I go to uh, the foundation, uh, the foundation goes to the different YTL groups and say, let's go the extra mile. And uh, let's take the talent that we have and try to impact education. You have different skills, you have different uh, abilities. Now let's do something and impact uh, education in Malaysia. And so today I just want to show you a video of what we've done uh, through uh, the foundation. A very kind soul called me one day when I was driving to work, quite early in the morning, and uh, talked about a classroom makeover. I think they may be a weak class, but I think they deserve better you know, conditions of studying. Sometimes they don't have enough tables, don't have enough chairs. The electrical point, some of them don't work. Class and the marriage and actor in the English Padika or Rum, Abunanga Nala Padipum. I feel like my class not classroom not comfortable to me. So we went and made a trip to the school and identified the classroom that we were supposed to make over. Quite a, we were quite taken aback at that point in time when we saw the condition of the classroom. And my immediate reaction was, okay, it in, in such a condition that whatever we do can only make it better and make a difference. So my first reaction was, okay, we know we can make a difference with this. Important aspects of teaching relates to a supportive classroom environment. A bright, safe, and caring environment allows students to influence the nature of the activities they undertake, engage seriously in their study, regulate their behavior, and know of the explicit criteria and high expectations of what they are, they are to achieve. to come up with ideas, you know, positive messages for the students. It was fun actually doing, doing it, you know, with the rest of the team. They were having fun transferring whatever, 
you know, thoughts, positive messages on the table. interesting journey, instead of running uh, 100 km, actually, I've been around Malaysia for at least uh, the past two years for about 100,000 uh, kilometers. And what I've done is, uh, I've gone to different YTL groups and I said, hey, let's go the extra mile. Find 35 people uh, who are passionate about education. You may have the skill in doing a change in a classroom. If you don't, it's okay. I prepared a booklet. This is a manual that is almost like a Bible to how you do a classroom makeover. So it's everything uh, from your colors to the classroom all the way to uh, the furniture. What I've done is I've said, okay, this is a guide for you. Go to different schools, let's change, let's transform education in Malaysia. We believe that uh, the environment, if we change an environment, it will be a place where students want to go in. Uh, they want to learn more, they want to, they, they'll be more excited about uh, going to school. And so uh, what I've done is uh, we've done classroom makeover. We started the first one in SMK Puchong. And uh, we've done, uh, since then, we've done about uh, at least another eight more. And we plan to do another four more by the end of this year. I'll just quickly run through to you a, a classroom that I've done. Uh, this is Tanjung Sapat. It's uh, one hour, 45 minutes away. Very bad uh, classroom. Uh, it's quite close to uh, the seaside, so it's really broken. Uh, vandalism. Uh, so what they, do, they did was uh, they entered the classroom. It's done in seven to nine days. Yeah, so we do it during the school holidays. We clean up the classroom. Uh, basically, we paint it. Uh, we do a bit of a, this is the CEO of YES who actually helped us out. We make sure the top management as well as those who have not, uh, you know, basically anybody can come and help. And uh, we transform the country. We give a punching bag to sometimes. For the vandalized classroom, instead of vandalizing the classroom, we vandalize the yeah, punching bag. And on Monday, we do a lot. Now, let me share with you once again. I just want to recap uh, the extra mile. Uh, if you want to go far, uh, if, sorry, if somebody asks you to go one mile, go within the second mile or the extra mile. Don't take what you're good at and go the extra mile because you can make an impact. Uh, you know how to cook, write music, Go and impact the community program. If you want to go far, uh, far uh, go alone. If you want to go far, bring a friend. If you want to impact community, don't do it alone. You hire out and uh, go with friends. Work together with people who, who believe in your cause. And that's it. Set yourself on fire for the things you're passionate about. And people will come from miles to work with them. I don't know what gift you have today. But I know this room is built of students with passion. You want to change the world, you want to do something good. Uh, I wanted to go the extra mile, I didn't know how to. So I used the thing that I was good at, which is running. And I told people, hey, run with me, join me. Raise up funds with me, work together with me, and uh, watch things change. And I encourage you today to go the extra mile in all that you do. Because when you do, you'll be able to impact not just yourself, but you'll be able to impact the world around you. Thank you very much.